While the Stalker games don't feature any drivable vehicles, at least in normal conditions, the zone is filled with many machines both of civilian and military origins. Some are old and derelict, some are still in use, and some are simply unique. Hello Stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video we will check out all the vehicles found in the zone from the Stalker games. Civilian Vehicles Among the various vehicles found within the zone, many are simply civilian cars from Soviet times. Most likely such cars used to belong to the inhabitants of the zone before the first Chernobyl disaster or even possibly to the power plant and secret laboratory workers after that. Nowadays they are mostly found in a very dilapidated state, often stripped of many parts like wheels and doors. They are sometimes used by stalkers as a hiding place for a stash. The known models of civilian cars are the Moskvich 2140, a family car produced by AZLK from 1976 to 1988. The Zaporozets 965, a small car produced from 1960 to 1969. Interestingly, the Freedom Technician decided to install a toilet seat in such a vehicle. The Zaporozets 968, Another compact car, although more recent, built from 1970 to 1994. The UAS 452, an off-road van produced between 1965 and 1985. Then the civilian vehicles also include a variety of utility and work-oriented designs. The T40, a tractor built from 1961 to 1995. It is no secret that the zone contains many former agricultural areas, from the lands of the small local farmers to the giant fields of the infamous Agroprom Institute. So it is not surprising to find such a model here, whether intact or in pieces. The T-130 tractor, which is more of a bulldozer, to be honest. Most likely these models were used after the first Chernobyl disaster for the cleanup, as they would be valuable to push around and bury all kinds of radioactive debris. The Zil-130, an all-purpose Soviet truck mass-produced between 1964 and 1994. It is particularly known for being the model used for the infamous death trucks. The Gaz 53, another widespread truck. It was produced from 1961 to 1993 and in the games is featured in two versions, one with a flatbed and one with a tanker. The Kamaz heavy duty truck, one of the largest vehicles in the zone. I'm not sure which model it is, but I read it might be a 5320. It could be seen with different sizes of trailers. We also got a couple of buses, which probably took part in the large-scale evacuation of Pripyat and the surrounding villages following the disaster in 1986. The Cavs 685, a bus built from 1971 to 1991. and the LAS 4202, a suburban bus produced between 1985 and 1993. Interesting fact, in rare occasions some vehicles still have their windshield intact. In this case, the player can decide to break it, experiencing the glass physics from the X-ray engine. Military Vehicles the zone features some military cars and trucks both in derelict and ready for service conditions. The UAS 469, a robust off-road utility vehicle from 1971 which is still being produced today. 
Major Kaletsky was being transported in such a car, before he was kidnapped by the loners, and his vehicle was left there to rust. Furthermore, the Freedomers crew was trying to fix such a model for the faction's use. The Lada Niva, a car with a legendary status in all countries of the former Soviet Union. The series has been continuously in production since 1977. The Zil 131, a flatbed truck similar to the Zil 130, except this one is a 6x6 and was made for the military from 1967 to 2002. It was such a truck which carried the Perrin poison gas, before the whole convoy was abandoned at the Preobrazensky bridge. The Zil 131 converted into a fire truck. These were probably used to put out the fire at the power plant following the explosion in 1986. Personally, it is one of my favorite vehicles from the zone, because it is uncommon, unique in its design, and stands out thanks to its red color. The Gaz 66 military truck, used by the Red Army as a mean to carry infantry and produced from 1964 to 1998. It is still in service in many countries of the former Soviet Union, including Ukraine, yet it remains a rare sight in the zone. One Gaz 66 seemed to have been used as a power source by duty during their time at the Agroprom Institute. The army also has some more combat-oriented vehicles. The BTR, legendary Soviet APC. The zone is filled with them as they were used here several times. During the first 1986 crisis, then again at the birth of the zone in 2006, and since then in the many military operations that have taken place in the zone. Despite this, all of them appear to be the same model, the BTR-70, which entered the service in 1978. When operational, the vehicle is equipped with a heavy machine gun in the turret, and can transport a total of 10 soldiers, including the two pilots and the gunner. It is speculated that the monolith faction used a BTR of their own against the soldiers in a battle near the entrance of Laboratory X-16. As for the military, they were seen using BTRs at their assault on the power plant at the end of Shadow of Chernobyl. The T-64 tank also used during the various military operations within the zone, although none could be found in a working state. The T-64 was a 38 tons main battle tank introduced in 1966, featuring a 125mm gun as well as coaxial machine gun. It was manned by a crew of three. What's more, military helicopters were extensively used and seen in the zone. The Mil Mi-2, a small and lightly armored all-purpose helicopter produced from 1965 to 1998. Strangely, this model only appeared once in the entire Stalker series, as a boss fight in the Limansk Hospital. The Mil Mi-24, the legendary Soviet attack helicopter. This model was introduced in 1972 and is still being made today. Much like the BTR, the Mi-24 was extensively used by the military as early as the 1986 disaster, and represents one of the major advantages of the army over all other factions. Indeed, the Mi-24 is a force to be reckoned with, sturdy, equipped with a heavy machine gun and rockets, and able to easily transport a whole squad of soldiers almost anywhere in the zone. At least as long as the military knows how to navigate between aerial anomalies. The army even developed an unknown technology of emission protection systems, which allows the helicopters to safely operate during blowouts. Such systems were fitted on the Stingray choppers, 
although none of them returned from Operation Fairway. The Mil Mi-6, an impressive heavy transport helicopter introduced in 1960. Back then, it was the largest and most powerful helicopter in the world. In the zone, it seems it was used both in the 1986 cleanup and for present-day military operations. Yet it remains a rare sight, and none could be seen in the air. Interesting facts. Part of the interior of the Mi-6 was modeled, and you can see inside the cockpit. As for the Mi-24, you may notice that the pilots are, well, let's say, in critical condition. Other vehicles. It's not really a vehicle, however I wanted to mention the small bumper cars from Pripyat's amusement park. In call of Pripyat, some can be found scattered around the city, even though the amusement park itself does not appear in the game. The zone is full of train tracks with various abandoned carts, as well as a few locomotives. The CHME-3, a diesel shunting locomotive produced from 1963 to 1994. The M-62, a diesel passenger and freight locomotive built between 1965 and 1990. The VL-80, an electric freight locomotive produced from 1961 to 1995. I'm not sure if I missed any, but I was only able to find it here, in the garbage. Then mostly in Zaton, an area formerly full of water, a few boats can be seen. Sadly, I could not find much about them. All I can say is that we have very small boats with only a few seats, then we have a few larger vessels, and finally we have the huge ships, being Noah's Ark, the Svechenko, and of course the Skadovsk. The game also features a few tracked excavators. They are probably based on a real-life model, yet I could not find any information about it. Great at shoveling, but not as good as the next vehicle. The Bucket Wheel Excavator. A giant excavation machine, similar to those found in surface mines. Since the first models from the 1920s, such machines have been known to be among the largest land vehicles to ever exist. I am not sure if this particular excavator is a real-life model, or if the developers simply made one of their own, but it certainly looks very impressive. Obviously, this is a unique vehicle in Stalker, which can only be found at the quarry near Yanov Station. However, it was not always meant to be that way. Originally, the bucket wheel machine was to be featured in the Pripyat Underground, a level supposed to appear in clear sky. In the end, the area was removed and later reused as the P1 underpass in Kolov Pripyat, while the excavator was moved away from the tunnels to Jupiter. It is well known that the player can climb onto the vehicle using this tree, and with some agility you can even get to the very top of the structure. Last but not least, there is the UAV most likely an RQ-4 Global Hawk. This American drone began service in 1999 and is still in use today. I've actually talked about it in my fifth Iceberg Layer video, but in the end this aircraft largely remains a mystery to us. We don't know who sent it, in the zone and why, and we might never find out. To conclude this video, I would like to say that in the good ending of Call of Pripyat, the technicians Cardon and Nitro partnered and started working on creating a vehicle specifically designed to operate in the zone. This has led some to believe we will see such a vehicle in the upcoming Stalker 2, 
However, I must inform you that the developers have made it clear there won't be any drivable vehicles in the game. That being said, it does not mean vehicles won't appear, and there is a possibility they will exclusively be used by NPCs. It seems it will be the case with helicopters, so why not with cars? I guess time will tell. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, stalker, and goodbye.